Madrid is a fascinating European city that immediately grabs tourists' hearts and thoughts. The Spanish capital is an ideal trip for people who enjoy culture and art, due to its many museums and art galleries. But it is also a metropolis with many green areas and delicious food. Welcome back to Town Travel Tips. In today's video, we will tour Madrid for 48 hours, highlighting the best itinerary possible for a short stay and yet getting the most out of this lovely city. Remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you haven't already. Every like is essential for us and a great sign of your appreciation for all of the work that we put into every video. If you have already subscribed, you are an awesome person. Without further ado, let's dive into our Spanish adventure. The airport connects Madrid exceptionally well, being one of the biggest hubs in Europe, so reaching the city center won't be a problem. Regarding accommodations, try to get a hotel or Airbnb in the city center, because Madrid is vast and touring around it in just 48 hours requires quick movement. On the first day, we will visit the major tourist attractions of Madrid, a city with a great past and history. As always, Day 2 will be more relaxed and slow because Madrid is a city that has to be lived slowly to get its true essence. It has been almost 500 years since Madrid became Spain's capital, once the very heart of a mighty empire spreading across the Atlantic Ocean and well beyond its current European borders, Madrid still shines for the traces of the legacy of the older times. With over 3 million people living there and a population that skyrocketed during the 1980s, it is indeed a big city. Still, the center is not that big and can be easily crossed by walking. Our exploration starts from the main square, Plaza Mayor. This is an important public place in Madrid and used to be the heart of Old Madrid. It was constructed during the reign of Philip III in 1590 and a statue of the then ruler is still standing in the middle of the square today. The red buildings around the square served many functions during these centuries and are now home to some government offices and many cafes. Walk to the end of the square and you will notice it is linked with its sister square, Puerta del Sol, the other central plaza in Madrid. Both are forbidden to cars and are great spots to wander and look at the architecture and local shops. In the middle of Puerta del Sol, you will notice the KM0 stone, which indicates the exact geographic center of Spain. How cool is that? Since it will be around lunchtime, head to San Miguel Market and get ready to taste the best Spanish delicacies. The San Miguel Market sits just outside the ancient Plaza Mayor, between Puerta del Sol and the Royal Palace. Because of San Miguel's tourist-heavy location, the market has earned a poor name in recent years for being a tourist trap, but the affordable prices and the quality of the products indicate otherwise. Trying the jamón iberico will confirm so. Jamón iberico is a delicious dish of salty ruby red Iberian pork. The meat has a marbled appearance with transparent lines of fat running through it. Traditionally, it has to be eaten with bare hands and without bread so as to taste this special ham in its purest form. Other delicacies in the San Miguel market are seafood, fried fish, and dozens of traditional Spanish cheeses. You will beg for more, but be prepared, because the location is crowded, especially between 1 and 2 p.m. After lunch, go to the Royal Palace, a short walk away from the two major squares. Madrid's Royal Palace is a historical and architectural wonder that's well worth visiting. This vast estate is the largest palace in Europe, almost double the size of Buckingham Palace in London, and it's been standing for nearly three centuries. Behind the palace is a huge city park, where you can rest and relax before hitting the typical Spanish restaurants for dinner. There is plenty of choices near Puerta del Sol, so you will have your chance to try an authentic paella out. There are three versions of paella, land, sea, and vegetarian. Paella with seafood, including juicy shrimp, meaty squid, a delightful scattering of mussels, and lemon slices is the most traditional one. 
fish and mussels are replaced by chicken and beef in the meat-based, while a wide variety of fresh vegetables are perfect for the crispy rice in the plant-based version. In Madrid, locals eat very late, even after 10 p.m., so do not rush to the restaurants too early. Meanwhile, look for a wine bar and taste the local cava, a typical and refreshing Spanish sparkling wine. After a quick breakfast, you are set for day two. The first stop will be a quick trip to the Del Prado Museum. The Museo Nacional del Prado is one of the world's most prominent art institutions. Caravaggio, Goya, Rafael, Velázquez, and other great artists who shaped European art history from the 12th to the 20th centuries can be found in its galleries. It's not as impressive as the Louvre in Paris, but it is worth a visit even if you do not have a prominent artistic side. After the museum, head to the Parque del Buen Retiro. As the name suggests, it is a vast city park built around the great pond of Buen Retiro, one of the most iconic places in the Spanish capital. The pond, built in 1635, is an impressive artificial lake within the park, where water shows and rowing competitions are still held today. For your last afternoon in Madrid, you have two options. If you feel you want more culture and art, the Museo Nacional Centro de Arte Reina Sofia should be your next stop. The museum is impressive and has many of Dali's masterpieces. Still, people come here for one painting in particular, the famous Guernica by Pablo Picasso. Staring at this big, intense, and deep artwork is breathtaking. If you are in the mood for something lighter, head to the Fábrica Nacional de Moneda y Timbre instead. The name might sound familiar if you are a fan of Money Heist, a Netflix show about a robbery in the Mint of Madrid. Even visiting it from the outside is undoubtedly something fans will appreciate. Indulge in more tapas for your last dinner in Madrid. Patatas bravas, bombas, and Galician-style octopus can make a perfect Spanish-style dinner. Observe how calm the people all around are, their relaxed lifestyle, and their appreciation for good food and a glass of cava or a cerveza, the Spanish name for beer. Madrid is where things move at a controlled pace, and it does help make it an ideal destination for a perfect weekend getaway. Have you been to Madrid? Are you planning a trip to Spain? Let us know in the comments section. We love hearing from you. If you fell in love with this city, check out our video on the top five foods to try in Madrid at the link below. Did you find this video helpful? Hit that like button if you did, subscribe for more videos, and click that bell icon so you don't miss out on our following videos. Thank you for watching, take care, ciao!